searched on the jet bridge. Sign a consent form. It's not a consensual interview. Or I'm going to detain them, run my dog on it, and get a search warrant. It's an ambush. By plainclothes drug agents dressed like passengers. There's no way this is Randall. Tipped off by TSA. It was horrible. Why, why me? Not for drugs, but money. See cash, seize cash. How many innocent people do you have to search before you find what you're looking for? Sir, I've got nothing to say to you. They don't want word about this getting out. Why are agents searching black men more than any others? We take that question to the nation's capital. These people are not arrested. The money is arrested. <laughs> Where we find a surprising alliance across the aisle. I think it was rotten to the core. Racial profiling. Off the backs of innocent citizens. Trying to stop the government from taking money from innocent passengers in plain sight. I'm Chief Investigator Brendan Keith. They're standing right next to you at the airport gate, but you've probably never noticed the plainclothes drug agents who stake out the boarding door. They don't find a lot of drugs in these jet bridge searches, but they do find a lot of money. And we found them. Hiding in plain sight at the busiest airport in the world. Drug agents walk the concourses blending in by dressing just like passengers. This is a DEA task force officer scanning passengers boarding a flight for Los Angeles. There's another. How do we know who they are? Because we use the same tactics to investigate them after several passengers said they were targeted for warrantless searches at the gate or on the jet bridge. I'm a random search guy. So he says, so those white folks, and I'm the random search. Hollywood actor Jean Ellie was stopped by Clayton County officers while boarding a flight to LA. Were you here in Atlanta? Yep. How long were you here? Doesn't matter. Why are you asking me all these same questions? Check my bag, do what you gotta do with him so I can get out of here, please. The narcotics officers didn't find anything but kept asking questions of the Emmy winning actor. When you purchase your ticket? Don't worry about it, man. Just put the call. Check my bag so I can get out of here, please. I just back here. Thank you. That whole thing is just so humiliating. Like, who thinks this is a, a, a proper way to treat anyone? Tabari Sturdivant is an Atlanta-based film director who was also flying to L.A. when agents stopped him at the departure gate. All my life, I pride myself on being an upstanding citizen and you still do this to me. I'm clean, like I'll comply, but like, why, why me? Drug agents search Tabari's bags in the boarding area in front of other passengers, some recording on their phones. I'm thinking more about, you know, making this plain that I'm even thinking about my rights at this point. Is that part of their strategy, you think? I think it's 100%. Records show that DEA and local police rarely find any drugs or make arrests during what they call cold consent searches at the gate. I see the finish line to get on the plane. Everybody knows that feeling of getting, uh, you know, right at the door or getting on the jetway when you get blindsided. I'm like, man, I got to get on this flight. And they were like, if you let us do our job, we'll get, I'll make sure you get on your flight. So I'm like, oh, do what you got to do. They didn't find anything suspicious in Tabari's bag. So what were they looking for? He just is like, are you high? Are you, have you smoked? Do you have any drugs in this bag? Do you have any money? The DEA and other drug agents are seizing millions of dollars from departing passengers at Hartsfield Jackson, mostly from flights to LA, even though it's completely legal to travel domestically with any amount of cash. We found dozens of cases in Atlanta's federal court, USA v. some amount of currency. That's right, in most cases, they don't arrest the passenger. They arrest their money, even when no drugs are found. The probable cause statements show that the cash is administratively forfeited as drug money if the passenger can't prove on the spot that their money is innocent. You're either going to sign a consent form saying that you're allowing us to search them, okay. or I'm going to detain them, run my dog on it, and get a search warrant. Feel free to search the bag, sir. Are you willing to sign a consent form? Yes, I will sign a consent form. Feel free to search my bags. In this 2015 Department of Justice report, the Office of Inspector General told the DEA it should stop using a troubling technique, causing passengers to believe a voluntary search is a mandatory TSA secondary inspection. Eight years later, we found DEA agents at Atlanta's airport using similar methods. We're no different than TSA, man. People just like give us a little more time to make it. He 
just approached me and he asked me for my ID. He didn't state who he was. He just asked me for ID. And I thought he was a, a Delta agent. He had airport credentials on. And so I, I gave it to him immediately. I thought this was how I was going to get on the plane or something. I don't know. The drug agents may be in plain clothes, but they're not undercover. This is Sergeant David Fikes. He and his canine Bane are still all over the Brookhaven Police Facebook page. Since Fikes was assigned to the DEA task force at the airport last year, records show he's been involved in seizing more than a million dollars in cash. His police department has received a 9% cut of that money, more than $100,000, even though Brookhaven PD is nowhere near the airport. If we have the ability to walk up to, say, Officer Fikes or to any one of these agents in the airport, what would you like us to ask them? How would you feel if somebody did this to you? How would you feel? We found Fikes and other plainclothes DEA task force officers by going to departure gates for LA flights. They stopped passengers at the boarding door, asking to see their documents before going through their carry-on bags. The searches we watched came up empty. The drug agents cased three different gates in Concourse A, blending in with passengers while we observed from a standoff distance. But it didn't take long before the task force officers spotted our phone and camera. Once they sat down, it was time for a cold consent interview of our own. Hey there, I'm with the news. You're Sergeant Fikes, aren't you? I'm with uh, Atlanta News First. Okay. How many innocent people do you have to search before you find what you're looking for? Sir, I've got nothing to say to you. Another officer was behind me, out of sight, over my shoulder, giving hand signals to Fikes as I asked him questions. What about Sabari Sturdivant? Do you remember him? No? Took everything out your bag and put it all around in front of everybody and made you look like a criminal. Like, how would you feel? Officer Fisk. Why do people have to prove themselves innocent? You got nothing to say to these people? Drug agencies $5,000 and up, most often when no drugs are found, even though it's completely legal to travel anywhere within the United States with any amount of U.S. currency without declaring it. So what do you do if you need to buy a used truck out of state? Kermit Warren is back on the road to recovery. His fight with the government finally in the rear view mirror. What does this truck mean to your livelihood? Everything. Without this, I can't make my money. I can't, I can't feed my family. It wasn't a hurricane here in New Orleans Lower Ninth Ward that took his life savings. DEA agents seized his $28,000 at the airport in Columbus, Ohio. They said we were notified that you had a lot of cash on you. I said, what is it against the law for me to travel with cash? I'm up here to purchase a truck. The pandemic took Kermit's job as the shoeshine man at a New Orleans hotel. So he and his son decided to start a towing business. They found this used truck for sale in Ohio and flew there with the cash to buy it. But they decided it wasn't the right truck for them. I decided, I said, I'm not going to get this vehicle. We're going to go to the airport. We're going to fly back to New Orleans. With the money. With the money. They left with the same money in this bag photographed when they arrived in Ohio. On the way home, Kermit told TSA at the Columbus airport he had a large amount of cash, and court records show the TSA informed the DEA agents, who seized the money without finding drugs. I wasn't arrested. I wasn't charged with any kind of crimes or anything. All they wanted to do was take my cash and send me back home. They didn't have to prove you were a drug dealer. You had to prove you weren't a drug dealer. That's correct, sir. I said, if you don't believe me, we have the number to the gentleman who we're gonna buy the vehicle from. We have a description of the vehicle. We have pictures of the vehicle. Didn't wanna hear any of that. It was just see cash, take cash. Kermit's father drowned here when the levees broke during Hurricane Katrina. His mother died soon after. They didn't have much, but what they had, they left to their son. And Kermit says that inheritance was among the money the DEA seized. Most of it was my life savings. I would take $100 per week and put on a side for like 25 years. How did Kermit eventually pay for a tow truck? He filed a claim for his own money in federal court. Drug dealers don't try to get their money back from the police. They say, well, this is the cost of doing business, right? That's correct. I would have chalked it up and said, that's 
just a part of that lifestyle. But I work hard for my money. Everything I have is from blood, sweat, and tears. Now he's back in the driver's seat here in New Orleans, the sun setting on the case after the nonprofit Institute for Justice represented him for free, and federal prosecutors agreed to drop the case and return his money. What was it like when the government gave you every single penny back? How did that feel? I knew I would get it back because I know one thing, I was innocent. Do you feel vindicated? Of course, why wouldn't I? I'm fighting with everything living inside of me that this does not happen to anybody else. Who are drug agents targeting for these searches? We now have the answer. These logs document what we observed. Black men are searched more than any other group. At the busiest airport in the world, some passengers have an unexpected layover on the jet bridge. I'm a random search guy. So he says, so those white folks, and I'm the random search. These Clayton County narcotics officers searched after Jean Ellie. The same thing happened to comedian Clayton English. When they stopped me on that jet bridge, most of the other people that went past me seemed to be, you know, uh, you know, white people. English has joined forces with fellow comedian Eric Andre. I had two agents whip out a badge. Filing a federal lawsuit against Clayton County Police accusing airport narcotics officers of racial profiling. The most hardcore drugs I have in my backpack are Propecia. Drugs are rarely found in these jet bridge searches, according to Clayton County narcotics logs obtained by Atlanta News First Investigates. Records that also show local police have seized more than a million dollars in cash from passengers. We know that more than 90% of the people they search, they don't seize anything and they don't arrest anyone. Right. It didn't make sense to me at all. It felt like profiling because who's taking drugs to LA? Weed is legal out there, everything. Like, you're gonna get what, I don't see who's taking it out there. Maybe you should be catching somebody coming in, that might have made sense. Like, how many big dealers have you caught like this? Is this how you caught El Chapo? And then once I was actually given the statistics, I'm like, oh, okay, that's never what it was about. The comedians cite national statistics showing 8% of air travelers are black. Their lawsuit accuses Clayton County officers of stopping black passengers at a rate seven times that national average. In a little more than a year and a half, Clayton County officers searched more than 360 passengers on the jet bridge. That's enough to fill two 737 jetliners. Travel statistics show one out of every three airline passengers is a person of color. But according to Clayton County logs, their officers searched passengers of color at double that rate. Black passengers overall made up the majority of those searched, 54% and black men were by far the largest group. 46% of passengers stopped on the jet bridge. The odds of it being random and it coming out to where all the people that you're pulling over are black people, are people of color, are some ethnic group, it's like, no, there's, there's no way this is random. There was a handful of black people. My flight was full. So let's say it was 200 people on the flight and maybe five to 10 black people on the flight period. You didn't see any white people stopped getting on your flight? No, absolutely not. Film director Tabari Sturdivant was also boarding a flight to LA when he was searched by federal drug task force officers. I travel around the world and I've seen different things. I've seen random, I've seen random, you know, you put your ticket on it, boop, you, this is a random check all over the world. Why am I in my hometown, Atlanta, Georgia, that, you know, you can totally humiliate me and dis disregard my rights? Atlanta News First Investigates tracked the plainclothes task force officers through the airport. Records show the federal agents described the searches as random consensual encounters. But the same records detail how they selected specific passengers, observed a man who appeared nervous. Why you? Why did they pick you? I had a black hoodie on. I had an expensive duffel bag around my back. I had some expensive shoes on. That's not a crime. That's not a crime. But designer bags show up repeatedly in the federal forfeiture filings and DEA evidence photographs. Brown Gucci bag, black Louis Vuitton backpack. They're saying Atlanta to Los Angeles is a drug trafficking route. 
Right. But it's also a route for entertainment. Black man with a designer bag flying to L.A. might be in the film industry, not the drug industry. Right. The only reason I can think is because they look like they're not supposed to have something that nice. Or you think that this person shouldn't be able to afford this item based off their skin color. This is the form DEA agents were required to fill out 20 years ago, showing the race and ethnicity of passengers they searched. But the Department of Justice Inspector General discovered the DEA has not collected any such data regarding cold consent encounters since 2003, in part because there were too many in a day. The IG report said the Department of Justice noted cold consent encounters are more often associated with racial profiling. Okay, wait a minute. I'm not even allowed to get on a plane to go do work without being, you know, profiled. The Clayton County search logs are heavily redacted, but Atlanta News First Investigates was able to see behind the redactions, showing the local officers received training from the DEA task force in a three-day federal program called Operation Jetway. We got those records from attorneys for the two comedians, but when we asked for the same exact records directly from Clayton County, the section about officers getting federal training wasn't redacted, it was completely missing. You're taking people's money based off an assumption, not facts, not evidence, and it's really not much recourse for the people. So yeah, something definitely needs to be done. This is movie prop money, the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of dollars. I traveled legally with this simulated money in my carry-on bag through TSA seven times in multiple cities, and I was never stopped or questioned. Others weren't so lucky. TSA has one mandate, securing air travel. But screeners are looking for more than just weapons or explosives. They're also looking for money. TSA Rule 100.4 tells screeners to alert police when they spot large amounts of currency concealed within someone's bag, even though traveling with large amounts of currency is not illegal. The cash that uh, appeared to be hidden. There's not anything wrong with $1,000. That's not true when flying domestically. Yet drug agents in Charlotte offered this LA-bound passenger a deal. Sign a form abandoning his $100,000 or face a lengthy federal investigation. There's an option to avoid all that, not to sound like a used car salesman, but I'm gonna give you all your options. You can walk away from that money. I'm gonna seize the money, but if you wanna walk away from a federal investigation that's linked to the money, those are your options. But if you sign this, uh, nobody from the U.S. Attorney's Office will contact you. Three years later, he's still trying to get his money back from the federal government. Oh, man. Court records show Clayton County narcotics officers use similar disclaimer of ownership forms at Atlanta's airport. Any check bags? Clayton County officers found neither drugs nor money in 93% of these jet bridge searches, according to our review of more than a year of drug task force logs but they were still able to seize more than a million dollars cash for reasons such as the money was concealed within clothing or it smelled like marijuana. Just flying to California can be suspicious. The passenger was flying from Atlanta, a known drug hub city, to San Francisco, a known drug source city. Civil forfeiture is actually easier than criminal forfeiture. Dan Albin and the Institute for Justice have successfully sued the DEA and other agencies to get passengers' money back. Perversely, it's actually easier to forfeit someone's property from an innocent person who is not charged or convicted of a crime than it is from a criminal defendant who actually is convicted of a crime. In nearly all airport cash seizures we've reviewed, no drugs were found and the passengers were not arrested or charged with a crime. In the vast majority of these cases, they just take the money. They don't take custody of the person. They, in effect, arrest the money instead of the person. That's absolutely right, especially in airport interdictions. It's almost always uh, someone's cash is seized, but they're allowed to continue traveling uh, to board their flight. On location during this interview or interrogation, you are effectively required to prove that your money isn't from drugs in order for them not to take it right there on the scene. The way that law enforcement conducts interdiction, the burden is on the person to prove 
that they're innocent and that their cash is not involved in any criminal activity. You're either going to sign a consent form saying that you're allowing us to search them, okay. or I'm going to detain them, run my dog on it, and get a search warrant. Feel free to search the bag, sir. It's not a consensual interview in those circumstances. It's an ambush. Atlanta News First Investigates found plainclothes DEA task force officers picking out passengers and searching bags at Hartsfield Jackson Gates, including this canine handler from Brookhaven Police. How many innocent people do you have to search before you find what you're looking for? Sir, I've got nothing to say to you. So we went straight to the top, Drug Enforcement Administration headquarters here in Northern Virginia. We gave the agency days advance notice that we wanted to sit down for an interview. But after we arrived in the nation's capital, the DEA said it didn't have time to answer our questions about the airport searches. They don't want word about this getting out. They don't want the public to know about what they're doing. They want to be able to continue seizing money from innocent people that they never charge with a crime so that they can keep that money and put it back into their slush funds that they can then spend on any activities they want, including generating even more revenue for DOJ, DEA, and, and these other agencies. How much revenue? $1.3 billion. That's how much cash the Department of Justice seized last year alone. The DEA seized more than any other agency, and airport interdiction made up most of the DEA seizures. But where does all that money go? into this forfeiture fund. The Department of Justice, according to a federal audit, has amassed a fund of $5 billion from cash seizures, and the agency can spend that money however it pleases. Congress wants to change this. From battleground to common ground, unlikely allies are joining forces in the nation's capital. In this country, we believe that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. A deprivation of civil liberty that can happen to any of us. They just took it and they said, sue us. Have you ever tried suing the government? It's not that easy to sue the government. Members of Congress are responding to our investigative series, exposing drug agents hiding in plain sight at airport gates, seizing cash from passengers without arresting them. This isn't criminal asset forfeiture where you arrest someone and then take their assets as part right. of the criminal prosecution. Right. They're not charging them. They're arresting the money, not the person. In fact, I think technically the charge is against the money. It's bizarre. It's some old maritime law or something from way back when, but they charge the money, not the person. But I think the important thing is it's turning justice on its head. You're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. Not, oh, you're guilty, give me your stuff, and then you can have it back if you prove you, you didn't get it through ill-gotten gains. And that's not the way our country's supposed to work here in a divided United States Capitol. This issue is bringing both Republicans and Democrats together. It's about both civil rights and civil liberties. Oftentimes, they are the same. The vast majority of people they're stopping are people of color, and the largest single group is black men. It's a matter of racial profiling. Georgia Congressman Hank Johnson is one of nine Democrats and nine Republicans co-sponsoring the Fifth Amendment Integrity Restoration Act. The power of the government to simply seize property just based on a belief, a mere belief, an unfounded belief even, that property is associated or connected with uh, criminal activity. But not off the backs of innocent citizens. And you'll catch some crooks in this process as well. But sadly, we're catching too many innocents who have to fight their way out of this bind, and many of them can't do it. Michigan Republican Tim Wahlberg has filed his bill over and over for nearly a decade. Criminals, actual criminals, have more rights yeah. than innocent people who have their money taken. Under civil asset, criminals have more. That's why civil asset is such a valuable tool. It can be used well, but it can be abused. And uh, because you don't have to meet the standards that you would for a criminal uh, asset forfeiture. The FAIR Act would force the government to prove to a federal judge that seized money was from crime with clear and convincing evidence. And all cash from civil forfeitures would go to the Treasury's general fund. Federal agencies and local police would no longer get to keep the money they seized. It's, it's a, a perverse, perverse incentive. incentive. That unified message is echoing across the aisle, pushing the FAIR Act through a House committee for the first time by unanimous vote. That unanimous vote didn't happen in just any committee. 
The bill passed out of judiciary, the setting for some of the most partisan battles in recent years. Yet Republicans and Democrats appear to agree on at least one thing, to make it harder for the government to seize money from innocent people. I think it was rotten to the core. It's now passed through a committee in the House and we're hoping to pass it in the Senate as well. Some law enforcement groups have pushed back against the bill, including the National Sheriff's Association, saying it would be a gift to the drug cartels. While the FAIR Act awaits a vote on the House floor, we went back to Atlanta's airport after our series of investigative reports. Checking multiple LA-bound flights, we found no plainclothes drug agents hiding in plain sight. And a check of the court shows no new forfeiture cases have been filed to take passengers' money. Whether or not they're watching for you, we'll keep watching for them. Good night.